PCB Foundations, by Paul Taubman, and Sean Kelly. Presented by 9.connects. We are witnessing a major shift in the printed circuit board, known as PCB, design responsibility, from technicians whose careers grew alongside with the industry, to designers who were never formally trained, nor educated, in the art of PCB design. New designers do not have the luxury of growing alongside a fledgling industry, but rather have the onerous task of getting up to speed on an industry that is evolving ever so quickly. Though this book was originally written by electrical engineers, for electrical engineers, we will not make use of the term engineer, but rather designer. It is certainly true that a number of electrical engineering students, and electrical engineers, will make use of this book, however, there are also savvy technicians, drafters, and members of other engineering professions, who are also seeking knowledge of the PCB design process. With the advent of mechatronic design, the need for knowledge in both electrical and mechanical tools, and processes is ever increasing. In fact, the best example of a mechatronic design is the PCB itself. Every decision that needs to be made, will involve both electrical and mechanical considerations. For decades, academia assumed that PCB design is so straightforward and low-tech, that this can be relegated to any technically inclined individual. Thus, they did not put any emphasis, or time, into the PCB process in their curriculums. However, with high-speed designs requiring technical knowledge, academia is starting to take notice. What is interesting about this is the fact that these institutions, and their facility, also need to learn the trade in order to teach it. Conversely, management at many technologically driven companies operate under the assumption that PCB design is so low-tech, that there is no need for an investment in PCB training. Thus, much is expected from the designer, but little is done to train in the art of PCB design. Most designers who have learned the art of PCB design, did so through the one school that accepts all who apply, the University of Hard Knocks. They learn through the bits and pieces of information they could glean from others, and the internet. And of course, through their own trials and tribulations, also known as mistakes, in the design process. Finding information useful to making one proficient in the PCB process has been elusive, or piecemeal. One can easily find articles that provide overviews and detailed information, however, it is like reconstructing the Dead Sea Scrolls. The PCB design process is not apparent from this level, because both the flow of information, and the PCB process itself, are not linear. There are dozens of books and documents on the subject, however, many of them go too deep. They jump into the industry lingo quickly, and drown the reader in jargon. Others take on the traditional textbook form, and swamp the reader with equations and theory. In the EDA, which stands for Electronic Design Automation, Industry, the makers of the schematic and layout tools used by PCB designers, are more than happy to train a new user on the toolset itself, however, they neglect the teaching of the entire PCB design process, which includes topics such as specification writing, fabrication, assembly, and testing. In fact, some of the training exercises simply do not reflect realistic design processes. As for organizations like the IEEE, Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers, and IPC, formerly known as the Institute for Printed Circuits, but is now the association connecting electronics industries, yet still keeping their IPC acronym, have issued so many specifications, that it is truly difficult to know where to start. Reading them requires some knowledge of both the industry, and the terminology. This becomes the classic chicken and the egg conundrum. By the way, not all of these specifications are free. These organizations have bills to pay as well. When it comes to manufacturing files for fabrication and assembly, the training classes being offered tend to miss the mark. The EDA trainings tend to focus on the tool's capabilities to generate the files. The IPC trainings get into the deep, nitty-gritty requirements of the fabrication and assembly processes. In the end, both miss the mark in providing details of what documentation the fabricator and assembler require. More so, 
there's a failure to understand that missteps taken throughout the design, have major consequences for the documentation. For example, the lack of a good component library from the start of the project, will result in a laborious effort to create a bill of materials. More so, the errors within the bill of materials will surface at the very end of the manufacturing process, thus requiring the scrapping of PCBs, along with the investment made to manufacture the boards, a schedule slip measured in weeks, and the investment in new boards and manufacturing services. When we started to write this book, we chose to take a DFM approach. DFM stands for Design for Manufacturing. When you are creating a PCB, you are doing just that, creating the artwork that can be passed along to manufacturing, whether it be for prototyping a few boards, or for mass production in the millions. Laced throughout this book are tips, and notes, that will allow you to avoid the pitfalls that can add time and cost to the final design. This book may seem a bit backwards, as we start with manufacturing issues, prior to discussing the nuances of schematic capture and PCB layout. This was done with a specific purpose in mind. The problem with the traditional start-to-finish approach, is that the focus is on the theoretical aspects, because everything done, up until manufacturing, is simply a theoretical concept on paper, or on a computer, have you ever noticed how a project always starts off on schedule, and then seems to spiral out of control towards the end? It is at that point in the design process, when theory is being put to the test in real materials and real processes. Therefore, it behooves us to understand the realities of the design process, so that our knowledge of these realities prevents the theoretical, from becoming unrealistic. In an attempt to address all of the relevant issues pertaining to PCB design, in a fair and unbiased manner, we have written this book to be software neutral. This has been no easy task, given that the authors are most experienced in the use of Altium Designer. Granted, there are plenty of screenshots throughout the book, sourced from Altium Designer, simply because we cannot overlook the role of a schematic and layout tool in the process. Most of the design process is handled within the software tools, prior to sending the design to the manufacturer. With all the above in mind, we hope that you find this book useful. We also ask for your feedback. Notes regarding typos, clarifications, and missing topics are greatly appreciated. We wish you the very best in your PCB design endeavors.